Hey guys, I'm on a bit of a time warp right now. I don't really know what's going on. My computer, <laughs> I've been on my computer in a couple of days and it's saying it's half three, the third of February, but I'm very well aware that it is the 9th of February at about 2 a.m. Even so, we move. I was just about to go to sleep and I started having this thought and I was like, go to sleep, Evie, go to sleep. And I was like, I can't go to sleep, so I must talk about it. And what I was thinking about is the way we experience life is actually really kind of crazy like it's actually mad um and i was sat there and like the thought that started the chain of thoughts i guess was i was thinking about the ways in which we have i don't right i don't know about you guys but i have i feel like at least once a year like a completely like mind altering revelation that changes the way that I experience life whether that be like obviously a big part of it for me is like my spiritual side that's like usually how it comes about because any of you that, that dabble in that side of things will know what I mean about how like crazy that that side of things can go but in terms of just general life like I remember like having so say for example like a big one was like um when I hit my head like that was like a huge one for me like I just woke up and was like hmm I don't like my friends anymore I need new ones like and just changed my whole life because of this one this one thing like this one external stimuli stimuli stimulus Stimuli would be plural. So this one stimulus, that sounds wrong. I'm going to run with it. This one stimulus has come into my brain and my brain has fully decided to, uh, is it my brain? Yeah, no, I feel like it is my brain. Has decided to rewire the whole way of how it thinks about things because of this one piece of stimulus. And I'm thinking like, is this a normal thing? Because this happens to me like quite a lot. Like... I have this, like, I would say at least once a year for the past, like, couple of years, like, I'm, like, I have, like, an experience, and I'm, like, I am gonna be, I, I am changed forever, like, I am so different, and I am, this is, like, ah, and I think a big part of that is the ADHD, because it's very, like, impulsive, and, like, I am very impulsive as a person, and I can just be, like, I am gonna be this new version of myself and I'll just do it and like I won't even think about looking back looking back is not even an option and like very driven in that sense and that's just the ADHD brain I think in general but I don't know if that's like a normal thing to do as you get older because do you know I was <laughs> I was sat there and I was thinking I have no idea how long this podcast is going to be by the way might be short might be long but I was sat there and I was thinking if I can think of three sub points to around my point then I'll make this podcast. If not, I'm going to sleep. Because I have to be up at nine. I have to be up at nine. Me and Max are going to be and I must be there. We have shopping to do. But this this is intriguing me. So I'm going to talk about it. I feel like... So I'm here. I'm having all these like revelations. These crazy life revelations. Whether it's I've got hit over the fucking head. Or whether I've been fucking... I don't know. what Whatever's happened to me. Like... I've entered the darkest, deepest void of humanity and gone to hell and come out the other side. Whatever it is, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever has happened has happened, like, in in sense of this this stimuli that has made me want to change my whole entire life. And, whoa, sorry, my computer just glitched out for a sec. Um, And I was just thinking about it, like, in the sense of when we were kids, this was everything. Like... In the sense of, I feel like as you get older, you experience new things a lot less. You don't really experience new things as much when you get older. And I know there's like a thing where it's like, I feel like I sound tired. My voice sounds tired, sorry. I'm just, maybe I'm just, I don't know. Um, I feel like when we're, we're kids, we experience things all the time. New things are all the time. Because you, you're, you're new to the planet like you're literally like a new person in the planet and you're just going through the motions of what everyone else goes through all the time 
but because you've not done it before, you've got to do it. Do you know what I mean? It's like jobs. Like, I was thinking back to, like, when I worked my first jobs, and I was thinking about the expectations that, that were placed on me in my first jobs, and I was thinking, like, oh, like, I really used to beat myself up about, like, how I did this or how I did that or, like, what I said in that situation or what I didn't say in that situation or, like, the way I held myself or, the like, you know, my tone of voice or whatever, I don't know. I was thinking, like, Evie, bro, you are 14, like, chill the fuck out. Like, you have, you had no prior exp- experience of this situation or these surroundings. You didn't, like... <sighs> I'm thinking about a pub, I worked in this pub, and it was literally, like, the craziest experience of my life, like, I worked in this pub for, like, a month, like, month and a half, for my first job, and, like, it was crazy, it was absolutely crazy, like, I remember once, like, (laughs) I remember my turtle died, I had a pet turtle, and we went on holiday, and this is absolutely no disrespect to my (laughs) neighbours, I love my neighbours so much. But we went on holiday and my neighbours were looking after our turtle. We came home from holiday and they lost the turtle. It's so, it's peak. I know, it's so peak. It was a very long time ago though. And we are great friends. They are lovely people. And it was not on purpose. Just want to clarify that. But I remember going into work and being like, my fucking turtle was just fucking, and like, they were like, you need to do the desserts. And I was like, I I, I can do that, I can do it for you, so, it was like, warm chocolate fudge cake or some shit, and I was like, okay, I can do this, I can do this, and I have all these tickets, and I was like, I can do this, I can do these fucking desserts, and I remember distinctly, it was like, warm chocolate fudge cake, bread pudding, they're the two that I'm going to focus on, there was more, but they're the two that I'm going to focus on, I want like ice cream or some shit, so I'd like, scoop the ice cream, and then, done the cake, and done the pudding, and they were like, I sent it out, and they were like, okay, they took it out, and they were like, the cake's meant to be hot, so, okay, so I went to warm up the cake, put the cake in the microwave, the cake, like, dissolved in the microwave, like, it turned into just, like, a puddle of goop, and looking back in, in hindsight, get better fucking cake, or also, better yet, don't just microwave your shit, like, this was back me thinking, like, oh my god, I'm the worst person in the world for not knowing how long to microwave a cake for when I haven't been told, like, do you know what I mean, it was like, I feel like when you're so young, they're like, figure out yourself, figure out yourself. Anyway, there's a really funny part of this story I want to get to because it actually is hilarious. So, I'm stressing, right? I've gone through, like, four pieces of cake at this point. Just put them in the bin because I'm like, no one can know that I have quite literally wasted four pieces of this cake on just trying to get this cake warm enough to serve. So, I got a piece of cake that was warm enough to serve, got the, the bread pudding oh my god, and I remembered now, I remember why I said the ice cream, oh my god, this is so bad for me, this is actually so bad for me, okay, this could not have gone anywhere, so it's three desserts, bread pudding with cream, chocolate cake, and the, the, the ice cream, chocolate cake, I'm sure it was warm, warmish somehow, I'm sure that, so after I've just fucked up four pieces of chocolate cake, the bread pudding, I pour the cream, I pour this cream, um, and I, and then I put, like, you have to put, like, raspberry sauce on the, the ice cream, so I'm, like, perfect, beautiful, amazing, um, it was lovely, I sent it away, I was like, yes, first round of cakes, well done me, well done me, with my dying pet turtle, and I've lost my pet turtle, and I don't know how to work a job, and I'm so stressed, <laughs> you're literally not ready, so they sent back the, all of it came back, all of it came back, actually, the cake was fine, but I think they sent it back anyway, because they just weren't happy, so the cake was fine, they didn't know that I just wasted four pieces of cake, that wasn't the bad bit, the bad bit was that the cream that I'd given with the bread pudding was out of date, and it was clumpy, and instead of putting raspberry sauce on the, on the ice cream, I put ketchup on the ice cream, um, so that was that, and (laughs) that was like, I I just remember being like, am I dumb? Am I dumb? But then, like, looking back now, I'm like, (laughs) no, you're not dumb. No one showed you how to do it. And you shouldn't have had that responsibility at 14 years old on your own. They shouldn't have left you to do that on your own. And 
I'm not really sure how this is relevant to my initial point, but I'll sh- I'm s- right. Let me see how I can make this relevant to my initial point. Because my initial point was something along the lines of like how everything is a revelation or some shit. Yeah. So basically, I feel like the way. <laughs> Am I going to try and segue this into making sense? Yes, I am. Because I can do this. If there's one thing I can do is make things that don't make sense make sense. And I believe in myself. So, I would say now... Yeah, when I was 14... That was a fucking revelation for me. Because I was like, I'm such a dumbass. I put ketchup on your ice cream. (laughs) Why did I do that? I actually put ketchup on their ice cream and gave them clumpy fucking cream. That's so bad. But at the same time, like, I remember being like, I will never do that again. And that was such a big day for me. That was a monumental day for me. I quit not long after that because the boss was a bit of a prick and it was traumatising working there. And anyway, yeah. So, and then after that, I went on to work at an ice cream shop for three years and never put ketchup on the ice creams. Partly because we didn't actually have ketchup, because there was no need for ketchup. But, yeah, so that is, I guess, me segueing that round into a full full loop. Is that that was an example of when you're a child, for me. My point initially, right, <laughs> I've just gone on a story time, but my point initially was that we have these huge moments to us. Like, they feel huge moments when we're kids like when I was 14 that was a huge moment of failure I was I was all like I'm such a failure I can't believe I've done this because after that after I did that I started crying because I was so embarrassed and I went outside and I was like my pets just died and I've just come back from holiday and I'm fucking stressed out and I don't know what's going on and and it was such a monumental failure and I always remember it as a monumental failure but it also taught me never to do that again. And I feel like that's what I mean when I say I have these huge revelations. This is it. This is how we segue it around it. See, it always comes around some ways. I knew I was telling that story for a reason. Is that we have these huge failures and we we fuck up and we like mess up <laughs> like in these huge ways when we're kids and like these and like I was I can't remember what I was watching, like I don't know whether it's like a documentary or something. I was watching something the other day and it was like when you're a kid everything feels wow and the time is sorted itself out and the date sorted itself out it's no longer 3 p.m apparently it's now 2 19 yeah sorry when you have these huge things that happen when you're a kid and you look back and you're like was it really that deep like but when you're a kid yeah it was that deep because you didn't have any experiences to base it off of like it's like i tell my friends all the time like say they're going for a job interview I'm like you can you get any job interview you walk into the hardest part is getting the interview once you've got the interview you've got the job and they're like no that's only because you've had so many interviews that you're used to the interview process like I think I've said this before but like I'm the sort of person that will just walk out of a job if I'm not happy there and just get another one like I've I've never really struggled getting another job like it's just I don't think it's hard to get a job it's just hard to find a job that I'm interested in and enjoy and like, I'd rather work a job for three months, put 100% in for three months and then quit than work a job for three years and put 20% in, you know? I think that's just my brain. It might not be your brain. You might see me as a quitter mentality, but I just see it as ADHD mentality. I'm working on it. I am working on it. I did have a job for three years. I'm not just, like, quitting jobs left, right and centre. But it was a seasonal job. So I worked over Christmas, which explains why I had all these jobs when I was, like, 16, part-time, working behind the Sainsbury's counter and the deli. Like, I have such weird, like, why can I work? Like, I know how to scoop a perfect ice cream scoop. Like, that's in my brain, but I can also use a meat slicer. And I also know how to knock on people's doors because I was a door knocker. My, My range of talents is very strange. Anyway, my point is that when you're young, you have, like, you don't have the experience to know whether or not something's a big deal so you just will take it as a big deal because that is your brain just being like we've never had this before this is new stimulus this is a big deal ah and then you're like oh my god big deal big deal big deal and then the thing is usually when something's even if it is a big deal when something's not a big deal but your brain takes it as a big deal It doesn't matter if it wasn't a big deal to begin with. It's now a big deal. And because you've now made it a big deal, it's going to be a big deal. Because you're going to tell people about it. And you're going to 
like fuss about it and you're gonna whatever and it doesn't need to be like a bad big deal it can be a good big deal but so that's what the thing is when you're a kid your brain doesn't really have like a I feel like life is like you you have this like I want to say like a um what do you say like a scale of like is it a big deal or is it not a big deal and as you get older you kind of realize that things aren't really that big of a deal it's not that big of a deal it's not that deep you know it's not that deep but when you're young it is that deep because the deepest thing that happened to you when you were young and this isn't me taking away from people that have like severe trauma from when they're young because I know a lot of people do myself included but a lot of people have severe trauma from when they're young but the thing is is that I almost feel like as well a lot of people don't really realize their severe trauma when they're young they realize that when they sort of hit like 18 to 20 like I know a lot of my friends that are only now being like shit I'm actually traumatized from when I was seven years old but I didn't realize that when I was 14 like I just didn't even think about it so you don't really have this scale of like things that are a big deal and things that aren't a big deal you just think everything is huge and everything's the end of the world it's like when you fall out with one of your friends in school and you're like oh my god I will never live again and like it's this whole thing and like well for me it was at least anyway and like I've heard people say the same so I think it is the same like everything's just huge because you've never experienced it before what you don't know any different and it's like I saw this thing and this is kind of unrelated but I feel like it is related and I don't know how I'm going to relate this, but my brain's telling me to, so I'm going to do it. I saw this thing on Instagram, and it was, like, these fleas, and they got them. <laughs> Why am I... Sorry. Fleas. That's funny. So they put these fleas in a jar, and, you know, fleas jump. So fleas would jump to the size of the jar. And it gets to a certain point, they take the jar off, but the fleas would only jump to the size of the jar, even though they could jump, like, three, four times the size of the jar. And then their children would only jump to the size of the jar even though they were well equipped to jump outside of this jar. These fleas could jump so much higher than this jar, but because it was, like, generational, they'd, like, pass down this, like, brain thing. Like, they believed that they could only jump the size of the jar, so they only jumped the size of the jar. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like we're conditioned into thinking that we are only as good as whatever, you know? We're conditioned into thinking that we can't do whatever, we can do whatever, and that's how... It's like, you know, poverty mindset and rich mindset and... It's like the the rich think themselves rich and the poor think themselves poor. It's like law of attraction. It's literally law of attraction and just basic believing in yourself kind of thing. And it's kind of one of them things where it's like when you're a kid, you don't really know what is and isn't possible apart from what people tell you. So if someone tells you, you can't do this or you can't do that or whatever... Um, you're going to kind of adapt to that mindset and think like that and then say for example you do it anyway it'll be a huge deal because you never did it but also you were told you can't do it but then say for example you tried to do it and you fail you're probably never going to try it again because you've been like in your head proved right and like, do you want to know, this is a thing, I learned this in science in my A-levels, you can never, science cannot be proven, it can only be disproven, you can never be proved right, you can only be proved wrong, which means, if someone tells you you can't do something, what you can't do is prove them right, you can only prove them wrong, does that make sense? So if someone tells you you can't do something, you can never prove to them that you can't do it, you can only prove to them that you can do it. That sounds very philosophical, but it's not really. It's like, say, for example, if someone tells you that you cannot climb a flight of stairs, but you're like, yes, I can. They're like, no, you can't. And then you climb the flight of stairs. You're proving them right, right? So you're, like, disproving their theory. But if you say to them, yeah, you're right, I can't climb that flight of stairs, but you're not doing anything, like, that's not proving anything, that's not, you that, like, do you, do you see what I mean, like, scientifically, it's like, you have to kind of be proven wrong, you can't be proven right, I hope that makes sense, because I feel like that was a really shit, and that was actually an awful analogy, just ignore everything I just said, but I do stand by my point about how we can only prove ourselves wrong, we can't prove ourselves right, 
and I don't mean that in a pessimistic way, I mean that in the sense that, like, if there's things that people are telling you you can't do, you actually can, why is this coming off of some, like, motivational speech, it's not meant to be like that, it's not meant to be like that, it's just meant to be like, we always feel like we're all like, oh, you can't do that, can't do that, can't do that, so why, like, oh, do you know, I remember, I went for this meal once with this girl that I used to work with, um, she was like, she wasn't like my boss, but she was like, shadowing me or some shit, and we went to Wagamama, so relevant, but I, this is actually so relevant, I'm gonna tell you anyway, and she was like, you can't have a kid's meal, because I wasn't that hungry, I was like, I just have a kid's meal at Wagamama, and she was like, you can't do that, I was like, why? Like, why can't I do that? I'm going to do it. You're going to watch me and I'm going to do it. I'm going to eat it in front of you. Like, and I'm going to disprove you. Again, me disproving you. Like, uh, what do you, uh, are you dumb? Like, yes, I can. And I feel like this, we have this all too much. It's like, people are like, you can't do that. And it's like, why not? What are you going to do? You're going to stop me? No, you're not. You just don't think I can. And then I don't even know where this podcast is going, but I do quite like a lot of the points I've made, so I'm going to post it. But that is it. I'm going to go, because I really do need to go to sleep. And it is now 2.27 in the morning. (laughs) And I hope everyone has enjoyed this lovely podcast. And I hope you're all well. And I hope you're all meditating and doing your daily gratitudes. And I love you guys. Goodbye.